Okay, people. So today I'm going to be presenting on Harry Potter, if you did not know before. Um, so what specifically I'm presenting on is the hero's journey and Harry's like journey through it, I guess. Um, so yeah, and it's on book four. The um, what's it called? What book four? Goblet of Fire. <laughs> Um, okay, so first is the ordinary world. So, um, well, I guess before I start ordinary world, I should like kind of define what a hero's journey means. So basically, um, it refers to like a specific pattern in a story in which the protagonist goes through a set of like trials led by a mentor in order to obtain a specific goal. Um, And so I found that Harry, the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling um, encompasses a lot of what the hero's journey has. Um, every single book has kind of a, a beginning where Harry starts out in his home and then a, um, a climax where he's at Hogwarts facing some kind of battle. He always has a set of friends with him, a mentor, um, enemies that come in contact with him, and at the end, um, he finishes facing whatever battle he has and ends up back at his home over the summer. So, um, uh, this time in the series, the fourth book um, comes at a time where Harry has transitioned comfortably into like the main plot line of the series, where he's already admitted into the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, which if you don't know is um, Harry, um, Harry's a wizard. <laughs> um, so he goes to like this special school for wizards. So, um, and kind of a background on his family, both of his parents died by a, um, not a man I would say, but this guy named Voldemort. and. Um, Basically, they're part of like, uh, not a club, but you know, some sort of organization to um, bring down Voldemort and put an end to him and his uh, army. And so Voldemort went over to their house uh, when Harry was a baby and killed them. And he wanted to kill Harry, but um, Harry wouldn't, like he didn't die during it. So um, he left like a little, like lightning mark, like scar, that's why you see it in the movies. That's from when Voldemort tried to kill him. Um, so, there's that. So basically, how the novel starts is like the ordinary world, which I'm gonna start now. So, uh, it begins 50 years previous to um, the, the present time in the novel, which is like the 90s, so, yeah. Um, and it's introduced that um, the Riddle family, which it's, uh, the Riddle family is Voldemort's family. You see, Voldemort was a student at Hogwarts before he was, before he became Voldemort. Um, he was a very intelligent, kind of like secretive kind of student. And so his last, his name was Tom Riddle. So this is when we realized that the Riddle family, Voldemort's family, was mysteriously killed. And so the police pinned the murder on the groundsman of the house, um, Frank Bryce, but he was declared innocent. And so now in the present time, um, the groundsman Frank Bryce wakes up in the middle of the night to see a light in the window of the Riddle House. And so he goes to investigate um, and he hears two voices, uh, Voldemort and Wormtail, um, plotting to kill Harry Potter. So it kind of like sets up like the, the conflict for the book. Um, and then Voldemort ends up killing uh, the groundsman because he doesn't want word to get out or anything. Um, so Harry um, wakes up with like this throbbing pain in his scar from where Voldemort struck him. And um, he 
actually dreamt all of this. It's like basically like the whole thing was what Harry was thinking about, but it also actually happened. So um, he worries that Voldemort is gonna come back to kill him. So he writes to his godfather, Sirius Black, about advice, and that's kind of where like mentor, the kind of mentor comes in and um, asks for advice about what to do about that. So, um, the call to adventure is the next step in the uh, hero's journey. So Harry returns to Hogwarts, the school that he's at, and he um, he gets invited to the Quidditch World Cup before before he goes to Hogwarts, um, which with his friends the Weasleys and Hermione, which is like two like best friends, and um, it's basically like uh, what do you call the soccer tournament? What's it? The World Cup? Yeah. It's basically like that, but it's with Quidditch. Um, and so basically during the middle of the tournament, these Death Eaters come in and like torture everybody. And basically they're like followers of Voldemort and like his army and stuff. So that's kind of like foreboding for Harry. And he's like, what's going on? Like maybe my dream is real sort of thing. So that's kind of like coming to him. Um, so then the kind of the actual call to adventure is when they head back to Hogwarts and Dumbledore, which is the um, headmaster of the school, announces that there's going to be a Triwizard Tournament um, at Hogwarts, which is comprised of like three or four schools in which they all like compete in order to win like a, a trophy. Um, and he also announces the new Defense Against the Dark Arts <coughs> teacher, which is Mad-Eye Moody, because uh, he only has like one eye, that's why they call him Mad-Eye. Um, and that will become important later. So, the um, contestants for this uh, Triwizard Tournament have to be 17 or older, and so whenever this, um, it's called the Gobbler Fire, so basically it releases the names of the people who are to be competing in the tournament. So um, Harry's 15 at the time, and his name comes out of the goblet, and he's like, why is my name in this? I'm 15, like I'm not old enough to participate. But it's kind of like his call to adventure, because he's like, well, like they always have to heed what the goblet says, so I guess I have to participate. So um, Hogwarts end up, ends up having two um, contestants, him and this other guy named Cedric <coughs> Diggory. Um, and this kind of makes Ron, his best friend, jealous because Harry kind of is always successful and Ron always kind of wants the spotlight but he never gets it and he kind of feels left out. Um, and this cult adventure also makes Harry feel uneasy <coughs> and also a little bit angry since a lot of students have accused him of putting his own name in the cup. Um, and he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily refuse the offer, but he does feel really uneasy and kind of angry because he's like, I didn't do this, like I didn't ask for this, but like he has to do it, so he's just like, okay, I guess I'll do it because I have to. So it's not necessarily like a refusal of the call and what a hero's journey entails, but it's kind of just like a, eh, I don't want to, but I will. Um, so, the next step is the meeting of the mentor. So in this novel, Harry has a lot of different sort of mentors, and it's not necessarily just people that are older than him, but it's also like, you know, people with the long white beard, um, kind of Gandalf sort of people, but it's also like his classmates and um, his godfather and stuff like that. So, um, so Professor Dumbledore and Hagrid are two of the most like old people that um, influence him. Dumbledore's literally an old man with a long white beard, so that's kind of like fits the exact mold of what a mentor should be in the hero's journey. Um, and he doesn't and uh, Dumbledore doesn't necessarily help him with like 
the tournament in this book necessarily, but it's he's just kind of an overall figure that guides him through his time at Hogwarts and helps him, like, gives him tips and stuff to defeat Voldemort. Um, and so Hagrid is the groundskeeper <coughs> of, um, not groundskeeper, the gamekeeper of Hogwarts, and he actually helps Harry um, with a part of the tournament by giving him information about the first of the three tasks in the tournament, saying that um, he brings him to the forest and shows him a dragon, saying, like, this is going to be part of the tournament, you're going to have to deal with dragons, like, be prepared for that. So he kind of gives Harry a leg up in the first task. Um, uh, yeah. So Hagrid is more of, he's less of like, <coughs> I kind of think of Hagrid as like an uncle because he's not afraid to like bend the rules to help Harry get ahead. Whereas Dumbledore is more of like a father figure who's kind of just like, I'm not gonna, like I'm gonna help you, but I'm not gonna like bend the rules for you, you know? Um, so another person, like adult mentor that Harry has is Sirius Black, which is Harry's godfather that, um, he was best friends with Harry's parents, but unfortunately were killed, so he had to take over. Um, and he usually comes in and speaks to Harry in the fire. There will be, like, his head in the fire, if you see, like, in the movies. Um, and he'll, like, give Harry messages on, like, what he should do about stuff. Um, and in this case, he asks uh, Sirius about the first, like, the, what he should do about Voldemort and stuff and so he talks him through the fire. Um, and um, before the first tasks, he warns Harry uh, that the headmaster of Durmstrang, which is one of the schools that's competing in the tournament, that he used to be a Death Eater, which is one of Voldemort's followers, and that he might still be dangerous, so to like look <coughs> out for him. Um, and he also warns him about Professor Moody, saying um, that he was, uh, he was, uh, used to be in the Ministry of Magic um, and was a really good like dark arts wizard, which is kind of sketchy for Harry. And he's like, hmm, uh, that's weird. Um, and speaking of Professor Moody, he takes a liking to Harry during his time at Hogwarts and kind of helps him um, with spells and potions and stuff. Um, because he's like, oh, you're, you're a special kid. Like, you seem to be doing well. I'm going to help you with this. Um, and he also gives him a hint, as um, Hagrid did, and tells him that the way to get past the... Uh, uh, the way to get past the first task is a broomstick and to fly into the... by, by the dragon and um, <coughs> get the golden egg. So... I'd say the last um, mentor he has is Cedric Diggory, which is the other contestant, um, with him in the games, and he helps him. Uh, they kind of help each other by telling each other, like, this is gonna happen in the task. They'll like find out about stuff, and Cedric will give him advice about like what spells to use about, like, because Harry hasn't used them yet. Um, and it actually, um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, so next is the test allies and means of process.